behalf of my client who is approaching and standing by the podium. All right, good morning. And um, council did request that he be available. Um, there are some circumstances, so the court did allow participation by um, Zoom for Mr. Shumke and Ms. Kraft, your name for the record, please. I need to be much louder, please. Sorry, somebody correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And you can see and hear your attorney, correct? Yes. Okay, Mr. Shumke, you can see and hear your client? I can, Your Honor. I can. Okay. All right. And so um, today's date scheduled for the arraignment and pretrial, and counsel asked for the arraignment. As the arraignment, we wait formal reading. My client stands mute. Or we the formal reading answer plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment and as to the pretrial. Your Honor, as the pretrial, I had an opportunity to get discovery, review it with my client, and then negotiate a plea with the prosecution, which my client is going to tender a plea to a lesser included charge of operating while visually impaired. She's not been promised anything. She's been advised of her advice for rights and constitutional rights to a trial and is prepared to enter into the plea today. Okay. And so, ma'am, I'm going to have you please <clears throat> raise your right hand. You sound like swear from the testimony box. Give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, thank you. And you heard the plea that your attorney placed on the record, correct? Correct. And as to the amended charge of operating while visibly impaired by alcohol, how do you plead? Guilty. And you've gone over your advice of rights with your attorney, correct? Yes. And you signed that document. Yes. Okay. And prior to signing the document, you read and understood each of those rights? Yes. Okay. And you understand by entering into a plea that you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your trial and appellate rights? Yes. And you also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea today, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in no. any way for you to enter into a plea? No. All right. Counselor, you can please write to your client. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention back to June 4, 2023. Were you operating a vehicle in the city of Riverview? Yes. And at some point you were pulled over. Is that accurate? By a police officer. Correct. Correct. And when asked to submit to a preliminary breath test, you'll stipulate that your blood that your breath test was over the legal limit, over a point zero eight. Is that accurate? Yes. And then at the station, you'll stipulate that your PBT was a 0.17. Is that accurate? Correct. Satisfied, Your Honor. Or is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea. <clears throat> to the amended charge, dismiss the original charge per the plea agreement. And we will schedule this matter for sentencing. Counsel does. September, oh, let's see. 28th work? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we'll do September 28th at 8.30 a.m. And counsel asked to bond. Your Honor, my client's not on probation parole. She is gainfully employed. Since the day of the offense, she's been going to the Shelby Women's Group AA meetings consistently. She has been keeping a log. Judge, I do not believe she's a flight risk. I'd be respectfully requesting consideration for a personal bond. Thank you, Judge. Okay. And, ma'am, yeah, where is it you work? Um, uh, Beaumont Trent High School. Um, Beaumont Hospital Trent. Core well now. I'm a nurse aide in the progressive care unit. Okay, 12 hours, 15 minutes. And if you were to test me, I won't be detected in your system. Nothing. Have you ever failed to appear in court before? No, this is my first time ever. Okay, you're not out on find any other jurisdiction? No. Why did you cut your hair? Well, well, I just wanted, okay. So no, it looks nice, but I'm just in here. You have long hair, so I know. Uh, I'm just going to shorten my head surgically, and I just, you know. Oh, there you go. The hot flashes are no joke. I can relate. Okay. So, <clears throat> I 
Okay. Yeah. 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 The court's going to <clears throat> indicate a $5,000 personal bond that to possess and consume any alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed. And you'll have to have a seat over probation, and somebody will be with you shortly for an interview. Okay, ma'am? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Have a good day. Okay. And good, um, good morning, counsel. Your appearance, please. Your Honor, good morning, Richard T. Serrano, P3328. I appear today on behalf of my client for purpose of sentencing. Please state your name, sir. David William Brzezinski. Okay, and sir, last I saw you, you were not in a wheelchair, so what happened? Well, I spent 20 some days in county and uh, I have the tether on and it's getting infected. The tether's getting what? Drawing a scab up and my ankles all swelled up and stuff. I have this ankle was in 26 pieces and it re reconstructed months ago. So I haven't been walking all that well. I drug it down up and down the hallways at Wayne County. This past time? Yeah, just when I was in for all those weeks. So you just had. So you just had your ankle broken in 26 pieces recently? No, within the last four months ago. Four months ago. Yeah, the reconstruction, it's still swelled up. And you're not in any sort of boot or anything? No, they cut the boot off right before I went into jail. So you did not have a boot on when you were arrested? No, I didn't have a boot on. They cut the cast off and I took the boot off the week before. I had an appointment to go the first of this month for an x-ray on it, but I was incarcerated. Well, on counsel, as I did indicate at the um, at the arraignment, I saw Mr. Brzezinski's at the establishment that he was at the day that he was arrested. I did not see, I was not anywhere near him when this occurred, um, but I can tell you that he didn't appear to have any trouble walking due to uh, I need to see the injury. But in any event, counsel, did you have an opportunity to go over the report and recommendation? Yes, I have, Your Honor. My client tells me he was in custody for 28 days. The, the pre sentence report says 720 through 814. Uh, you, you've already heard that uh, we said about the, the tether. We would hope the court would uh, allow the tether to be removed and find some alternative because he tells me he has to have further surgeries and they won't do anything with the tether on. Uh, he's on social security, your honor. He is uh, not on probation or parole anywhere else. Uh, the recommendation is for no probation, uh, fines in jail. We would hope the court would uh, consider time served. Uh, this is not being a crime of violence. And uh, your honor, uh, he will need some time to pay fines and costs. He's here with his 96 year old mother who posted a $250 bond. We believe it's still in her name. With that, Your Honor, we the court's discretion to adopt the recommendations and not give any further jail time for court cases. Well, here's the problem, right? The problem is, is that your client has an issue with alcohol, it appears, based on his criminal history and the behavior that night. And so I understand your client um, may be having some surgery, but uh, when is that scheduled to occur? I haven't been allowed to go to my uh, surgeons because I need x-rays and I can't take those with the bracelet on. So I don't know when my surgeries are supposed to happen. You need an x-ray on your opposite ankle. 
Yes. And you're telling me that they can't do an x-ray on Not my your, on your left ankle because you have a tether on your right ankle. Yes. And so why is that? It's too close to the machine that has too much power in it. I have a piece of paper on me that says I'm not supposed to be MRI or x-rays or nothing. It says that on my ankle. Well, sir, <clears throat> you don't appear to be a candidate for probation, so Sir, why did you return to that establishment? I didn't return to any establishment. I was riding home after I bought a pack of cigarettes. I live two blocks away. So here's, I'm, I'm, just, and I'm just going to review the report. This report indicates that officers were dispatched to the establishment. Your client had been involved in the incident earlier in the evening. I called the police. Okay. And so then the officers told your client not to return. And then apparently the officers were dispatched later to the establishment. And that's where your client was located. Does anything about a gas station or anything else? I went to the gas station, was riding down the sidewalk, stopped and lit a cigarette, and I was hundreds of feet away from that establishment. I ride up and down that sidewalk every day. So where did you happen to stop and light your cigarette? Right in front of the establishment? No. Where? Hundreds of feet away. On city property. The POA? I was in front of brushes. Okay. Well, sir, did, were you prescribed that wheelchair or did you? This is my wheelchair. I have degenerative bone disease. I have eight different cadaver bones in my body. I break easy. Okay. Well, counsel, your client's not a candidate for probation and um, You're asking this court to edit them to just the time served, which was, what's that? 30, 40? 28. He says 28, Your Honor. The report says July 20th through August 14th. My bond was paid on the 26th. I wasn't released till the 15th. The 14th of August is when you were released. It's no, it, that's wrong. It's incorrect. I was in Wayne County on the 14th. I didn't go to Dickerson to the 15th. They have the wrong date on it. So you don't need to give me in any attitude. I'm indicating what it says on my paperwork here. Correct, but it's the wrong date. Okay, even if it was a 15, that's 27 days. Well, let's see, you have 1986 operating while impaired by liquor, 1990 operating while impaired by liquor, 1999 operating under influence of liquor. You have some other <clears throat> charges in there. Then you have 2006 operating while visibly impaired, 2006 <clears throat> operating while intoxicated. 
some other charges within those number of years in 2009, operating while intoxicated. And then um, now we have this public intoxication. Sir, when are you going to stop using any alcohol? Excuse me? When are you going to stop using alcohol? I used to drink quite often, and now I have one or two beers and a shot or two, and that's it. Sir, you have six prior alcohol-related driving offenses. Six? Six. 1986, 1990, 1999, 2006, 2009. When was 2009? Sorry, there was two in 2006. Thank Why you. Why not? May 2020, May 20 of, 20 of 2009. That's when I quit drinking, mostly. And your honor, I did go over those with him. I told him that he had six prior. I, I was surprised to see that he stated in his pre-sentence report to the probation officer that he does not have a problem with alcohol. I think the facts speak for themselves, your honor. It's just a question of how this court has to handle that with my client's physical condition and his inability to wear the tether if he's going to further with his uh, treatment, medical treatment. Well, then that doesn't really leave the court with much of a choice, but for your client to um, serve some additional time in jail. You can't do the alcohol tether, which would uh, prevent him from drinking any alcohol. Then your client's going to have to balance up his time in jail because he's not a candidate for probation at all. So the court's going to indicate 60 days jail credit for 27. Rather keep the tether on, Mr. Simpson, if it uh, matters. If I have to, I will. That changes for a long period of time. Well, no, it's not an option. I'm, I'm indicating 60 days jail, 27 days credit. $300 fine, $100 screening assessment fee, $200 for the cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of $75, justice system assessment fee of $50. So $725. Your mom wants to apply the bond towards your client's cost. She can. Otherwise, you have to make arrangements upon your release. Please make sure all the phones are off. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you're going to go with the officers today, sir. And when I was in county, I wasn't allowed a wheelchair or a cane. How am I going to do this? Now? I will mark your file medical. I will mark your file medical. My sister and my mom can take this stuff with them. Can I take my cane because they get stolen in there? What, what should I do? Well, sir, I don't know if you're allowed to take your cane in custody. I don't know if it's considered a weapon or not. Um, I presume potentially it could be. I don't know. But How do I walk? Because last time they stole my food, I didn't drink for three days and stuff. We got beat up a couple of times. So what am I going to do this time? Sir, if you have some concerns with your experience at the Wayne County Jail, there are appropriate individuals to contact there. Yes, my mother's already contacted him once. Okay. Well, you're going to have to go with the officers. And if you, I, I'm marking your file medical. And so hopefully they will provide you with whatever assistance that you need. And I give my sister and my mother my chair. And we will make, the officers will make sure that you get your chair or that they get your chair. Thank you. Thank you. Wow.